This is our final session on our series in, of uh, looking at Tisha B'Av. And today we'll be looking a lot more closely at the nature of prayer and, uh, and how it is effective as part of our prayer life as, as believers, but also as a community and as a nation. Now Tisha B'Av is a day, uh, a solemn day of fasting and repentance and a, and, a, and a day full of the attitude of prayer. You begin the day by sitting uh, on, the, on the floor reading the book of, uh, of Lamentations. And as you progress through the day, you begin to sit on chairs, things begin to relax a little, you begin to put on tefillin and begin, and, uh, begin to pray. All the while, you are in an attitude of prayer. Uh, the Epistle of James says that the prayer of a righteous man is, uh, is powerful and effective. But what can prayer really do? Can you and I change the mind of God by prayer? Can you and I tell God what to do? What really is prayer? Uh, and that's what we're going to look at as we ex uh, today as we examine prayer and the prayer life around the subject of Tisha B'Av. The English word for prayer is derived from the Latin word precari, which means to beg or to entreat. So subsequently, too often, our prayers are simple requests and petitions, and that's all. But there's more. The Hebrew word for prayer is tefillah, which comes from the verb lehit palel, to pray. And it's a reflexive verb. What is a reflexive verb? A reflexive verb is something that you do to yourself. So prayer is reflexive. But wait, surely I'm talking to God, am I not? I'm not talking to myself. Even Jesus prays. Well, yes. And so in Hebrew, the word prayer contains within itself an idea of self-analysis and self-evaluation, something that is very intrinsic to the prayers of Tisha B'Av. So it's not that you pray to try and influence God, but rather in an attitude of prayer, you allow yourself to be influenced by God. Does God need our prayers? Well, the answer to that is a definite no. God does not need our prayers. Does God want our prayers? Well, the answer to that is a definite yes. Yes, He would like us to talk to Him. and Probably more importantly, He would like to talk to us. And so prayer is probably more about listening than it is about speaking. This is seen in the, the, the verb to pray being a reflexive verb and is also wrapped around the prayers of Tisha B'Av, looking inwardly at ourselves, listening to God, noticing that we can change the behavior in our community uh, to, to restore the presence of God to, uh, to our lives, to, be, to have more of Him, to feel more of His power and His, his, uh, his presence. Uh, and this will result in a blessing. This will result in, uh, in hope. This will result in the expectation of the Redeemer coming back to Zion. There are things we can learn from this as a community, and we can see the influences that have come into the New Testament and into our community. We do pray as individuals, but we should also learn to pray as a community. Jesus taught His disciples to pray, Our Father, and to forgive our sins as we forgive. At Tisha B'Av, we note the link between behavior, sin, and repentance as a nation and as a community. And in the Lord's Prayer, we see the exact same things in community identity and behavior, repentance, and forgiveness. Therefore, we should take seriously uh, calls for national days of prayer, confession, and repentance. We shouldn't point the finger at others. Rather, we should humble ourselves and acknowledge that we too have sinned and that our nation has sinned. But we should also remember that in repentance, we should have hope and that, that there will be a, a blessing for our nation. It's true that the problems of the world seem a lot bigger than us. We've got plagues, floods, famines, and war, and the economy. But there is power in prayer. So what can Tisha B'Av teach us? It is that we can come together as a nation, as a community, as a church. And that we can pray, we can intercede, we can repent of our sins, and perhaps even of our idolatry. And we can join in that national expectation of redemption 
hope, and of a coming Redeemer. It's true that the problems of this world seem so much bigger than us. Plagues, floods, famines, and war. But there is power in prayer. What can Tisha B'Av teach us is that we can come together as a community, as a church, and that we can pray. As it says in 2 Chronicles, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I'll heal their land. In light of that promise, we must pray, not for the sins of the past, but like the Jewish people of today, in, in looking at Tisha B'Av and our behavior, we must pray for our sins and motivate our community and repent of what our idolatry to empower the gospel, to have more of the Spirit of God and the fruit of the Spirit in our community. So we join in, in a, in a, in a community and in corporate prayer and in the corporate hope of redemption. And that is good news.